Thank you for having me. Yeah. I think as um, my team would tell you, I've never turned down an invitation for coffee, so uh, <laughs> coffee with Casey sounded like a perfect opportunity. <laughs> coffee with Casey, man. Well, um, I usually get this question a ton, so I'm going to turn this around uh, on, on you, Clayton, because guys always go, Casey, man, how, how in the world did you go <laughs> from football to finance? Football to finance, you know, inevitably, every interview, football to finance. So, Clayton, you took a little bit of different path. You went banking. You might have gone, like, finance to... Uh, Media. So I started my career at Citibank in a super fortunate position. So I was in a rotational management management training program. Um, so you were in Manhattan. In Manhattan, Is that right? yeah. yeah. So, so Citibank branch in Manhattan. In, in Manhattan. So wow. starting in 2007, um, right out of college, uh, sitting in a teller window, like doing every single position in the retail branch yeah. in, in commercial banking. Coming out of the rotational program was uh, running a retail branch at Fifth Avenue and 37th. Um, we had about half a billion dollars in deposits. And wow. uh, as you can imagine, we were not lending a dime. My sole charge was to protect deposits. Yeah, bring so, your money to us, yeah. we'll keep it safe. <laughs> exactly. No, we will not loan so, you any. Not only did I have to keep like, business model for clients like, confident and comfortable, but also employees. So uh, you talk about the transition to media, oh gosh, like yeah. I was super reliant on the financial media to know what was happening in the economy and in the overall banking environment. So you were so, reading the trade mags. Reading the trade mags, reading the Wall As Street 22 Journal. year old, like, <clears throat> Branch manager in Manhattan. Yeah, that's a pretty like, freaking awesome branch location open get assigned every to day at 8 a.m. But yeah. I had my like team together at 7:15, like just giving them the information they need to answer questions at the teller window yeah. when they're talking to clients. I mean, it was a especially in Manhattan, you have yeah. a pretty sophisticated um, uh, clientele. clientele. Yeah, so like sure. like people aren't coming in and um, like like they're coming in with educated questions. Yeah. and so the team has to be super educated and informed just to not like. Be bumbling and like and, and yeah. like help the have the clientele lose confidence in the organization. I'm really curious just to hear you know what was it like stepping in as the CEO? What, what were some of the biggest surprises, pleasant or otherwise? But like the biggest challenges were were, were people related. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Trying trying to get <laughs> it's complex little things yeah, as human exactly. beings, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Get, get get the formula right. Get the yeah. leadership team right, and um, and keep charging forward. Maybe we've been a a growing business then, growing business now, and so it wasn't a, um, a story where I needed to come in and make immediate changes. What a turnaround was, story. You got, yeah, they were already having was, great success, like you said, they're yeah. industry leader, you guys just wanted to amplify. Exactly, yeah. yeah, and that's what we spent the better part of the last two years, um, putting the right people in place, putting the right technology in place, and really trying to, to amplify that growth curve. So we're two years in, 22 people, huge focus on talent. You're 10 years in now. Yeah. Um, how many employees are part of the 4,000, yeah. 4,000, wow, yeah. so, t so tell me about that. I know you've gone from, you talked about your like first LO hire, yeah. your second, your third. <laughs> Trick the like, guys in the starting, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> take whoever, yeah, the polls. So, so um, walk me through the next um, 3,977. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, we got really lucky with those first two there, man. They they obviously hire people brighter than yourself. Yeah. We were able to do that early. We have two pillars that the company's built on, uh, servant leadership and excellence. Yeah. And the servant leadership um, kind of speaks to the humility that we ask people to approach their jobs with. That, you, know, you come in and CEO, what we would talk about in our organization it says that you know, every level of leadership doesn't have authority for the people that they're leading, it has responsibility for the people they're leading. So I actually have a responsibility to make sure that you're being successful in what it is that, that you're doing as a job. So we want people to have a deep sense of humility um, and, and love and care for other people. And that's part of our core values. We exist to love and value people. And then coupled with that is a commitment to excellence, a commitment to excellence. I think that's where that passion comes in. That's where that drive and commitment comes in. And um, you know, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's designing a, you know, a new movement T, a new movement T, we want that done with excellence. Um, we also want a loan application taken with excellence. And, and that, that requires passion. And so, you know, we, we really look, if, if we find a passionate, committed person that's willing to work hard, then we kind of go to that second level of questions where we talk about the intersection of their desires, their opportunities, and their abilities. Mm -hmm. And try to figure out where those things convene to put them in a position in our organization where they're just going to levitate out of bed in the morning. The great thing about it is as you grow, as you grow as an organization, people are able to do more of what they're just uniquely gifted and passionate yeah. about, right? Like, and that's that's our hope, you know, with this organization. I think, I think you'll have a lot of fun seeing that as well, man. And, and just you personally, like as yeah. a CEO, you know, it's, I remember the, the early days, you know, Tobe and I, my partner would be calling each other and we'd be, I'd be running out to Walmart. Hey, Tobe, there's, there's a sale at Walmart on laptops, man. Go pick up 10, I'll get 10. You, know, you can go by 10 at a time. Yeah. We, we'd scramble, we were IT, we were marketing, we were processing loans, yeah. doing locks, ran, running sales. And you know, I was maybe good at 2% of that. You know? yeah. And so I think, I think the, the neat thing over time is like hiring people that are better than you at different areas um, of the business, where, yeah. where, where it can really free you up to do what you're 
uniquely gifted. I've that, messed man. up so many office furniture purchases already. <laughs> like I'm, oh. I'm walking around your office this morning, like man, I really want like desk like that. Like I need this open setup, and I, <laughs> I've chosen zero. Yeah, that, just exactly. To be clear. Yeah, so, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm still like on OfficeDepot.com. Like. Totally, man. Yeah, those are those are like the early unsexy days of yeah, like yeah. hustling to get a business off the ground. That yeah. people, you know, I, I was kind of joking. Everyone always says, "Oh man, I'd love to be a CEO or love to run an organization." Like. You, you may, you yeah. may, but I don't know if you'd enjoy um, all the parts of the process to get there, yeah. right? There's a lot, there's a long uh, kind of <laughs> ugly journey sometimes to, the, to these things. I can't that, tell uh, you how many Saturday mornings my my wife and daughter have been in the office with me as I'm like with an Allen wrench, like putting together a standing desk or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, it becomes a family affair, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. CEO means uh, yeah, chief servant <laughs> <laughs> to everybody else. So man, I'm really curious. Tell us what's next for Housing Wire. You guys obviously, um, you guys you acquired in 2016, so yep. you've been running it now for two years. Um, Man, you've had some fantastic issues yeah. come out. I mean, oh, oh. gosh, it's been amazing. Oh, um, a few good ones. Yeah, yeah got few, on, 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 on the magazine. But <laughs> really, really, I'm curious. So what, what's the vision for Housing Wire? Where are you guys going over the next few years? Yeah, so the, the vision for Housing Wire is we are, our mission is moving markets forward. And, and we see, markets forward. And we see our market as the entire housing economy. you got two M's in there. I like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Move, yeah. And I think our, our, our mission has been moving markets forward since 2008. So, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a lot of synergies here, yeah. guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, that moving markets forward, we see our market as the entire housing economy. To date, we've been really focused on the single family residential mortgage okay. market, and that'll always be the, the core of Housing Wire. And we write, we write for the, the business professional audience. Our audience really leans toward the executive levels of the, the mortgage industry. And in the last year, we've done a lot to expand that audience, both mm-hmm. in term, by creating coverage and, and news and information that appeals to, to new segments of the housing economy. Yeah. So this year, we've launched a, uh, a new newsletter, which will evolve into a more um, active community for specifically for loan officers. And well, we see that as a huge opportunity for us to better serve the, the LO community and the folks that actually sit across the desk from um, homeowners and prospective buyers. Running Housing Wire, you sit at a unique vantage point of looking at the whole housing market. Yep. And I'm kind of seeing these mega trends um, emerge and evolve between lenders, realtors, and technology. Mm-hmm. Where do you see these three um, things intersecting over the next next three to five years? We certainly are covering the, the tech tools that are in the, and the, the FinTech players that are going direct to consumer and the online channel but we kind of continue, continually see an increased focus on tools that increase collaboration between um, the different uh, kind of advisors in the home buying process, which are realtors and mortgage lenders. Yeah, we, 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 you know, we start off the comp- uh, company with a real focus on serving realtors, and yep. we, 10 years later, remained really focused on serving realtors. The National Association of Realtors, all the consumer data, um, even the consumer data that we do ourselves, continues to indicate that, that, that people still want to work with a realtor. Yep. The feedback we keep getting over and over again is that people want a more integrated experience. They don't want to go to a big online lender for their mortgage and then go to the realtor yep. for the uh, kind of you know, purchase experience. They want that all brought together in, in you know one one place and one experience. I mean, in so many parts of the like consumer life, like consumers don't want to play quarterback between different constituents in any, in any buying process. Not when they're they're buying a car. Not when they're buying stuff from Amazon. They want yep. they want one point of contact. And sure. while like that might not be the, the perfect scenario in the, the home buying process. Anything that aids that the the flow of information and the, um, to make it easier for a consumer to, to get the the personal finance documents and everything that's required to, to get a mortgage or buy a house, like anything that aids that and makes it easier for the consumer is gonna have traction. Yep. And um, they, playing quarterback just isn't, isn't a fun position for a consumer in a buying process. <laughs> yes, yeah. nobody wants to do this, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't wanna get on Amazon and then call UPS to ship it to my house. No. And then, you know, call exactly. Samsung and ask yeah. them, you know, what, what the product specs are. Like, I wanna go one place, one click, um, get it all, wake up the next morning, have it delivered to my door. And I, we yep. think people want that home buying process uh, in a similar fashion, yeah, they, they want to really integrate into one experience with one one point of contact. And I think technology is helping us do that more effectively than ever yep. before. With a with a large distributed retail footprint, yeah. how are you looking at technology playing into your your lending process, both, both on the the internal side as well as the the consumer experience side? Yeah, so I think um, uh, it's it's an interesting question because the, the 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 common um, thesis has been, oh, technology is going to replace all the salespeople. And people want to go to technology yep. and replace all the distributed retail salespeople. And I think it's it's really, that's not the, the narrative that's being mm-hmm. played out at all. No. I think, in fact, what's happening is that technology is 
equipping and enabling the great distributed sales yeah. folks to do more volume than they've ever done. Yeah. We have guys doing more loans than they've ever done in their life. I mean, I, I remember it used to be rare for somebody to do two or three million. Now it's like, ah, oh, you know, put, put a one in front of that, do 12, 13 million a month. Like it's, it's amazing the amount of loan production great distributed retail sales folks are able to do because they're leveraging technology. Yeah. You know, the new digital mortgage applications, I mean, you man, you can get assets, you can get income, you can, you can get the borrower just about qualified. Um, with, with so much less work than we used to do, you know, 10 years ago. And I think it's only, gosh, it's, it's, it's improving, right? I mean, yeah. it, it's continued to walk down that continuum where great sales folks are gonna be able to kind of double their volume once again, you know, once again, if they keep using the technology that's available, and if they stay kind of the way you were informed um, on what's out there and stay that kind of expert um, advisor to their realtor partners and really work on creating a more integrated experience. So we're seeing technology help distributed retail guys. Does your, do your decisions in like where the like geographies you choose, the locations yeah. where you grow, does that, is that influenced by um, that, that focus on making sure that consumers across all different um, backgrounds and um, demographics are, are educated and have access to to movement or yeah, or to your I think I think people people really just, uh, yeah. decide that for us. You uh -huh. know, we look for great talent first. Okay, uh, I, I, we found that people can take our model in um, you know Dallas, Texas, uh -huh. or San Diego, California, or Denver, Colorado. I mean, it really doesn't matter as long as we have a great leader on the ground, okay. and that's why I think we distribute. That's one of the keys to distributed retail. You have to have great local leadership. We kind of think you know everything rises and falls on local leadership, and uh, we really believe in empowering we call our field generals, we call them market leaders. Um, we talk about leaders initiate, managers maintain, and you know, as, a, as, a, as a growing uh -huh. company, we didn't have anything to maintain. We weren't Citibank. We yeah. didn't have you yeah. know a 400,000 employees <laughs> to maintain. We always had to initiate and take market share. So we look for great people, and it really doesn't matter what kind of market they're in. They could be in a, a little tiny um, rural market in North Carolina, or they could be in, in Manhattan. If we have a great leader on the ground, they have a lot of success in uh -huh. serving a lot of folks. And what, you know, there's a big misconception, I think, still today in the United States that you need more money saved as a down payment and it's harder to qualify to yeah. buy a house than it actually is. Um, we, 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 all the consumer sentiment um, believes it's more difficult to get qualified to purchase a house than it in fact is. So we are doing, trying our best to do um, everything we can to educate Americans that you know, home ownership is an achievable reality uh -huh. for many more Americans than are taking advantage of it. And it's still the number one indicator of financial success as a family if you own your own home. Yeah. And so we want to see more families realize that dream of home ownership. So, so I'm, I'm cu kind of curious, as, as an entrepreneur and, and running a movement, how, and how do you look at the current competitive landscape? Like where are you, uh, where are you focusing your efforts to, to gain market share and bring in new buyers um, or new prospects or new loan officers? Like how, how are you looking at the, the landscape and where's your competitive and strategic focus right now? Yeah, so I think if you're not paying attention to Quicken, um, you know, you, you, you're really at fault in this business. Uh -huh. and, and it actually kind of excites me because I see us taking two very divergent approaches to, to the market. Um, Quicken is one that's going to try to head off the real estate agent, right? They just bought for sale by owner. Yep. Um, they bought home buying marketing. They, they, they really are trying to get in front of that process. They spent almost a billion dollars in marketing and done a fabulous job, you know, with that. They run a, they run a, a great company. Our perspective is that we want to serve the realtor community. You know, the hundreds of thousands of realtors that are in the United States um, right now that are working with most of the home buyers. 90% yep. of people are still using a realtor to buy and sell their homes. And so we really believe that by supporting the realtor community, we're gonna own the purchase space. Quicken wants to get in front, I think, of that realtor community, own the buyer up front and then kick them back. And we kind of say, no, what we think is that the, the realtor should be the first person to be talking to the people about buying a home. And then we need to support and work with our realtors uh, to to make that a one stop shop experience. I um, a few minutes ago you mentioned uh, that some of your LOs are performing at at levels they've never done before because yeah. of technology. How are you finding? Um, where are you finding LOs that like that know how to to leverage the tools that you're giving them and that are you know are going to fit in not just in your culture but also like fit inside of the the tools that you're giving them to be productive. It, it sounds yeah. like there's um, kind of like diverging like. I think going into this, like the, the rising rate and purchase environment, there's like clear winners and losers um, at, at different levels. And there's yeah. gonna be LOs who excel, and there's gonna be others who are, who are more challenged. Mm -hmm. um, how, are you, how are you finding folks that like fit inside of the toolkit that, that y'all have worked so hard to build? Loan officers that are purchase centric and that are great cultural fits for us, uh, we see thrive. And that's a big thing for us. We wanna find folks that are great cultural fits. And, and banking and mortgage particular has been a weird space. Um, it's not been one, it's been one that's been fantastic uh -huh. at helping people have professional success. You know, it's one of, it's, it's one of the, the most profitable kind of monoline industries in the world. 
right? And people have benefited and made amazing amounts of money, had amazing professional success with it. Conversely, like we've seen some of the worst <laughs> personal stories coming out of banking and mortgage. And I mean, that, those are highlighted, I think, in a lot of the, the Great Recession. Yeah. Some of the things that the stories that were just coming out, pouring out um, uh, of that time period. And then unfortunately have been continued on, you know, I think, I think in our space. So our passion is to find people who want to have great professional success and also have great personal success really, really grow as, as human beings. And you know, our mission statement is that we exist to love and value people. We think about that as um, investing in the long-term best interest of another. How do you act in the long-term best interest of another? And you know, be a part of a community that's about something more than, um, than just a profit. Mm -hmm. you know, we want to have a purpose beyond our profits. That's why we talk about being a movement of change in our um, industry, in our corporate cultures, and communities across America. So finding people who have a passion um, in life, I think for, 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 for not only prof professional success, but also great personal success as well, it, it, are, are folks that we want to attract to our industry. Man, if they can originate more, he's taking 1003s, taking 1003s. There's, there's really not that much unique about that in different places. We're going to process them really quickly. We're going to do that that part of the business with excellence. Um, but I think I think the, 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 the fit we look for is somebody that really has a passion to, to, to invest their life um, in something with a little greater purpose than, mm -hmm. than, uh, than simply making a profit. Uh, and so that's that's something man, that, that, that has um, been a little bit different for us in the industry and something we've really championed uh, aggressively. This has been such a cool experience to come here this morning and, and do a tour. I, I'm excited to see more of the office when uh, when we're done with coffee. Yeah. But, uh, it, is, it is wild how different this place feels in terms of uh, culture and energy and, and, and goals. Like the, the focus on personal and professional success, re really not something you hear um, echoed across the industry. We have a unique vantage point at Housing Wire and we get to see a lot of different lending operations and, and cultures. And, uh, and I can assure you that you guys are doing something unique here and that, yeah. that really does start with the people. Um, I love the fact that you've been recruiting folks from outside the mortgage industry, yeah. um, t training them on uh, underwriting and, and processing and, and marketing and HR. I mean, I, I met one of your uh, HR team members who, who came from a completely different career path yeah. and uh, like, I mean, she's here loving it and embracing the mortgage industry. Um, the folks on your team from so many different diverse backgrounds, it's, it's awesome. I think it really does help not just movement but help the whole mortgage industry to bring in people with diverse experiences and uh and and help us move this move this market forward Clayton, man thank you so much for coming today it's been incredible man thank you so much for your leadership at housing wire um i want to tell all of our los 2000 los out there guys lending life lending life equip yourself with knowledge knowledge is power Help Clayton run an incredible branch in Manhattan when he got out of school, helping run yeah. uh, Housing Wire today. It's something I've always invested in. Invest in yourself, invest in knowledge, jump onto Lending Life. And man, awesome publication too. Housing Wire um, has just been a fantastic publication for our entire industry. Man, I, I, I encourage any other mortgage execs out there, jump in, read it, digest this thing. It's got some great content, man. Thank you so much for putting out such, so much valuable content for our industry.